Hey guys, OG Albani here, bringing you guys our GG Incorporated Top 32 Battle. If you guys haven't caught the other GG Inc. Tour games, you can check out either the long movie where we go all over Swiss games, or our Top 32 game against Cheez-Its or games. Um, and yeah, you can kind of get caught up on exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. If you guys do enjoy today's video, be sure to drop a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 5,000 subs by the end of the year. And I'd really appreciate you having me out along that journey. We only got two months left, so um, we're, we're kind of getting close. We're, we're cutting it close if we want to reach that goal. But um, yeah, like I said, GG Inc. Top 32. We're going up against Blind Messiah. And again, if you haven't watched those other videos, I'd recommend that you do. But GG Inc. essentially is a uh, multi-generational draft league tournament. And from Top 64 onwards, it is best of three in generation 7, 8, and 9. The higher seed is able to pick the first matchup. In this case, it is going to be us. I believe we were the 12th seed. I'm not sure what um, Blind Messiah was, but I know it was a little bit lower than us. So we're going to pick the first matchup, which is going to be Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Then the loser of the first game picks the second one, and so forth. We'll go to a best of three. If the, you know, the third game happens, it's whatever one wasn't selected in between. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look. I do have my matchup for you guys on screen as well. I want to make sure... Um, you guys can get a little bit more of a, um, you know, in-depth look at the team, things like that. I had a couple comments last time saying, okay, we want to want to see the full drafts and things of the sort. So first up, we're going to be playing um, Sword and Shield. I think I might have said Usum before, but, you know, you know me, not very smart. Um, because I feel like this matchup was, in particular, my best. Uh, part of the reason is going to be this lead Zygarde into my opponent's team. If you look at it, there's no conventional ground resist. We have Mandibuzz, which naturally takes it on well. Um, but other than that, we're incredibly, incredibly strong in this matchup. Really just throwing off Thousand Arrows and Extreme Speeds is a great means of revenging a lot of offense things like sneasel if it gets weakened things like coco things like caldeo um and even things like uh you know on boost or on speed drop 15 years something like that if we're not healthy enough we are very very bulky on the set as well we very comfortably live a choice specs type of coco dazzling gleam and that means we live everything from the opposing side so we can kind of leave this guy and just click thousand arrows and really hope to break through our opponent's team Next up is kind of going to be our main win condition and a really solid revenge killer in Scarf Cartana. Um, the combination of Leaf Blade, Knock Off, Smart Strike, and Sacred Sword is really strong here. Obviously, Mandibuzz is an incredible check. However, Mandibuzz is really the only response to Zygarde. And Zygarde is used correctly in the sense that it's forcing in Mandibuzz and we can either 1v1 the Mandibuzz and kill it or keep it incredibly low. We really open up Cartana endgames with either Knock Off, Leaf Blade, or Smart Strike. Sacred Sword is just kind of super effective coverage at Steelix if really needed. I don't imagine I'll really ever click that move, but... You know, maybe we're in a 1v1 situation where we need to kill it and uh, or, or get that big 2 at KO on it to open up something like maybe our Tapu Koko, which is going to be a little bit more of a defensive variant this week. Rocking out with Rocky Helmet, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, U-Turn, and Bruce. I like Rocky Helmet for a multitude of reasons, the main of which being kind of that Sneasel is really annoying. Um, also, this is going to be my main pivot in Amanda Buzz very often. If I'm going to get knocked off, I want to do a little bit of chip damage in between error in the meantime. Rocky Helmet is also going to punish Coco U-Turns on the other side, and it's also going to punish um, Victini going for either U-Turn or V-Create, at least, you know, making it take a little bit of damage. But really, it's mostly for Pokemon like Coco, Mandy, and Sneasel, which is really nice. Grass Knot is to hit that Swampert. It also has a decent chunk to Steelix, despite it being neutral, just because Steelix isn't the bulkiest Pokemon in the world, but that's um, and then we just have U-Turn, Thunderbolt. Pretty simple set. Um, it's just going to kind of be used as a pivot here to hopefully get in our offense. If we force in guys like Steelix, U-Turn, Zygarde, Thousand Arrows. That's kind of the idea, at least. Then we have an Assault Vest Neolega. This is mostly going to be here for the opposing Tapu Koko, but it also pivots into Pokemon like the Dragology Well, and having the ability to very comfortably eat a hit from Keldeo is also really, really nice. Also gives a potential revenge killer to something like Victini, which is really, really annoying into the team. We also ensure that with our 330 special attack set that we're still getting a special attack boost when we get a kill. And I think that's important because I actually think this Pokemon's really strong here. Again, we have the Steelix here, but Steelix is pretty pressured. If we ever force any damage on that guy, like say it, you know, trades to get off a big hit on Zygarde and takes a thousand arrows. Neolite goes really strong here, and Grass Knot does a big chunk, especially if we get boosted up and start doing some damage. Other than that, the combination of our stabs with Psy Shock is really strong. Psy Shock for Calmine Keldeo, as well as Dragology hitting it very, very hard. Then we have especially defensive Wakan, very jealous. And we're Scald, Nightshade, Recover and toxic pretty simple stuff well kind just gonna help us cover not really the coco i mean it's nice to live hit from coke and get a scald off if we need to 
But I really like Victini, whether it be a Thunder or a Thunderbolt variant, or it be a Bolt Strike variant in the Electric Terrain, does a lot of damage. Can, can potentially just nuke through us depending on what the set is. This ensures that we can always live a hit on it, uh, against it and always get off a big Scald, which I think is very valuable personally in order to open up things like Kartana or put in range of Zygarde, Tapu Koko, things of the sort. Toxic is for the Keldeo, um, and Nightshade is to help us break subs on sub call mine variants, which can be very, very scary and annoying. I'm like, so called mine toxic or something weird like that, right? Um, toxic also hits Pokemon like Mandibuzz and, you know, really whittles them down. And this Pokemon is just generally annoying. It also switches into the likes of Swampert and Steelix very, very comfortably. And it's just a big nuisance for my opponent overall. And lastly, we have my goat here. Big Wiggles. Big Wiggles is making its debut. We're rocking out with a, not like a Wish variant, which is interesting, but we're, uh, we're Dazzling Gleam, Flamethrower, Stealth Rock, and Teleport. This Pokemon's going to function as a solid pivot to a lot of the special offense. Pokemon like Keldeo especially, it's going to be really nice into. Pokemon like the Tapu Koko, we can also take on our Citrus Berry. It's going to allow us to live to have pretty much any hit, minus like Banded Teenies and Specs Teenies and things of the sort. Um, Dazzling Gleam Flamethrower isn't the worst in the world overall, too, uh, outside of the Victini, obviously, but uh, we're kind of here to rock up and maybe teleport out on that guy again. If we can use this as an opportunity, or this Pokemon as an opportunity to teleport around or get slow momentum out into the rest of our Pokemon, we're going to put ourselves in a pretty darn good position with Pokemon like Zygarde and Kartana in our endgame. Alrighty, with that being said, let's go ahead and swap on over to the battle itself. You can see the team my opponent elected to bring. It looks like they left on the bench the Dragalgy. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And the Sneasel. So we have the likes of Steelix, Victini, Coco, Mandibuzz, Swampert, and Caldeo. Like I said, I'm just going to lead off with my Zygarde. There's really not much my opponent can do in the means of stopping this Pokemon from really punching a hole in the team. If this isn't a physically defensive Mandibuzz, we're putting ourselves in a really good position, and I'm totally willing to trade my band onto the Mandibuzz um, so that I can open up Kartana, because once that thing's gone, it's really, really just the Victini in the way of Kartana winning the game, and um, I feel pretty confident in my ability to be able to break through that guy, so... We lead off with Zygarde. They're going to U-turn out immediately, as there's no reason to risk um, this being Roselli or just bulky as i am um and not dying and if this isn't specs it never kills any zygarde anyways because zygarde's ridiculously strong we're gonna get off a thousand arrows here do just about 45 which isn't a two at ko but we do a ton of damage here and that's great because in my head i'm like oh cool cool i'm just gonna keep spamming arrows they can either waste all of their roost or get crit i'm totally fine with this i need to keep this guy low but we see this mandibus is faster than this if you guys remember our zygarde i believe we're not very much speed we're about 12 speed but that means this mandibus is pretty darn fast and i really was not expecting this so i'm kind of punished a little bit here for not going a faster zygarde um and this is really going to kind of dampen the plans of zygarde always keeping this mandibus low as we do a lot of damage but um the roosts are going to kind of outpace us at this point so this next turn foul play pops as i do click a thousand arrows once again doing 49 percent and now i'm going to pivot out into coco as a roost is inevitable here Again, this is going to allow me to um, hopefully position myself a little bit better here going forward. We're going to U-turn out here, go into Neo Lego, and in my head, there is no universe in which my opponent should ever risk me being Scarf. I suppose there is a world where they could be Kebia, but you don't get much out of Kebia um, that's going to, you know, make it worthwhile to take this trade unless you're like Wild Charge, and even then you'll probably die to recoil afterwards. So in my head, I'm like, okay, my opponent always pivoting out here, probably into the likes of Steelix, uh, maybe Swampert, but Steelix seems like the most likely answer. So I'm going to make the double out into my own Zygarde. Unfortunately, my opponent stays in and clicks Nature's Madness. I don't know if it was calling this play, but if they did, I assume they would just Dazzling Gleam. Um, but regardless, I, I do have to get out. I think my Zygarde still has great value just by being at 29. It is tough um, being at 29%. I would have loved for this thing to be a little bit healthier as it's really strong into the team and it still is quite bulky um, at whatever double of 29 is. But at the end of the world, we can still position in on some Pokemon and, you know, pick some KOs. Swampert is going to be the next Pokemon out here. I am just going to elect to throw off a big grass. Now, I get a crit here, which is nice on the Rindo Berry, but doing this damage, again, makes it to where Pokemon like Zygarde can come in and really put on a lot of pressure still. We're going to go into our Coco, threaten a Grass Knot right here as Grass Knot does come out. Does just about nothing to this Coco, but I immediately U-turn out the next turn. Should it be faster, which is a bit unfortunate, as a Nature's Madness does pop. Doesn't pop our Citrus Berry due to us being um, an odd HP number, but I find this is an opportunity to potentially get out my Stealth Rock and, uh, again, slowly whittle down this team. It also lets me know if this Victini is going to be Boots, Scarf, uh, or if it's going to be Boots, or if it's like a Scarf or Colbert variant. I think Colbert is potentially pretty likely for the likes of Cart, because I think this team is pretty susceptible to losing to Kartana. But we'll see. Thanks to Specially Defensive Wiggly, 
eating that hit up. We're going to get up our Stealth Rock right here. I do elect to just sack this thing off and punish an over-aggressive U-turn. It looks like the U-turn happens right here. However, my play always here should have been to teleport. Spoilers, we don't. I click Flamethrower for some reason, thinking my opponent would be Psycho and go into Steelix. Um, but really, that was never going to be their play. They are going to go into something like Victini if it wasn't Boots. Um, or potentially like something like Swampert because it's low enough and can outspeed me and kill me the next turn. It's not like I threatened to kill on it. They do go Swampert. Again, I think teleporting is always better. It lets me keep the sack in the back, but... Not the end of the world. We are a Wiggly Tough at the end of the day. And hey, Wiggly Tough did his job. It got up its rocks, baby. We're going to go out into Zygarde right here as this does put on immense pressure. Going to just go ahead and click Thousand Arrows. It does kill Swampert from this range, guaranteed. Down it goes. Mandibuzz is going to come out next. I see my free pivot out into Coco. This does show to be a defogging Mandibuzz. Um, so unless this last move is talk or isn't uh, U-turn, it's probably not a toxic Mandibuzz, which makes my Coco a really, really nice response to this thing over long term. Uh, over long term. U-turn's gonna come out on a Steelix. I'm gonna get out into my Zygarde, as even if I don't kill here, this is again a Pokemon I really, really wanna break down. It also opens up things like Coco to potentially just pick up a KO almost every time it's in, um, and I can do a ton of damage to this team. Out comes the Mandibuzz, and I click 1,000 arrows, doing about 43. Again, finding a position to get out into my Coco, and either this thing U-turns are toxic and doesn't roost, and my Zygarde looks great, or it roosts and I maintain initiative and momentum once again. Roos is going to pop, getting this thing back up to 65. And again, keep in mind, this is also old gens Roos. So there is 16 of these. It's not like I, I can very viably stall these out with my uh, Zygarde earlier, right? So there's there's a lot more recovery in these gens. Uh, we're going to U-turn out on the Z Steelix again. And again, I feel very confident to this point that my opponent is going to make this pivot out into Mandibuzz. I think losing Steelix this early just doesn't make any sense. It really, really opens them up to losing to Coco. Um... Or at least very, very much so struggling with the Pokemon. Obviously, they still have their own Coco. Uh, but regardless, I am just going to go ahead and click a big Stone Edge on a prediction here. Hoping I can pick up a KO on this Mandibuzz. We do hit the Stone Edge on the Mandibuzz switch. And we get a crit and knock it out. I'm honestly not sure if that crit mattered. Um, they didn't yell at me in the game chat. So I don't know if it did. I'm adamant banded. My arrows were doing like 40. So I don't think it mattered. If, if my head calcs aren't terrible. But if it did, I apologize. Um, but I'll take it. You know, Caldeo is going to come out next. I'm going to make a pivot on the Coco. This seems weird. I have a Jellicent. The reason we make this pivot is because I really do expect a toxic variant um, or at least a toxic to come out right here or a substitute um, on said, you know, expected Jellicent switch. And my Coco can kind of deal with this a little bit more offensively in that regard. And I like keeping health on Jellicent in order to take a hit from Victini and weaken it down for my Kartana. So I make this a little bit of a, an aggressive pivot. It pays off too because we take a toxic right here. I am just going to U-turn once again as the Steelix comes out, really taking advantage of this thing, always having to come in on Coco, and Zygarde's just going to click a band of Thousand Arrows, do 75%. So again, we're kind of opening up that end game uh, for our Kartana, potentially for a knockoff sweep, potentially for a Leaf Blade sweep if we're able to knock this thing out, or, or Smart Strike. I, it, would probably, it would be Leaf Blade. There's no, there's no reason I ever click Smart Strike at this point. Um, but we're going to do Thousand Arrows. It does eat citrus, so it is healthier than I'd like. And it clicks Earthquake here, showing to not be Ice Fang. This is big. Because of this, we're able to just barely live on 2%. Get off another 1,000 arrows into this Keldeo, and I think this is a big, big mistake for my opponent right here. I understand wanting to keep the Steelix around, but your own Coco probably checks my Coco to an extent. And your Victini is still at full. The health on this Keldeo is kind of one of the only things stopping a knockoff sweep from happening. Really, it's just getting Coco in range at this point and maybe finding out what this Victini is. Um, and what I can do here with Zygarde is I'm able to save this for E-Speed, Priority, and Pressure later. Um, obviously, Steelix, I can outspeed Narrows. Everything else, I'm just going to Extreme Speed and hopefully put them in range of Kartanas later on. Delson's going to come out on this Scald right here as they switch out this next turn, showing me that they're probably some kind of Choice variant. I think afterwards they showed me that they were a Choice Scarf. Um, and it wasn't like a sub-toxic variant. As Coco is going to come out, I believe I do double out into my own Coco right here. I was mostly trying to cover it being toxic right there. I didn't want to take the toxic on my Jellicent if I didn't need to. And again, I can put on a lot of pressure otherwise. We're going to go ahead and U-turn out on this Coco, get out of my own Kartana. I know that this thing can't really immediately pressure me unless this is like random Thunder Wave last move, but I'd be very, very surprised to see so. Um, I can kind of get out into my cart and again, use it as a Pokemon that can kind of break for itself. There's not really much that wants to switch into cart at this point. And if this Coco, as it roosts, stays in and takes this Leaf Blade, again, we're slowly putting everything in range of a plus one, plus two, plus three knockoff at this point. So Leaf Blade does a ton of damage as we see a U-turn out. And again, at this point, we're really setting up that uh, that knockoff sweep right here. 
Victini is going to be the switch out here as they do glaciate, potentially expecting, I guess, the Coco to be able to glaciate into, uh, what do you call it? Um, fire move and knock me out, but I do go Jellicent and thanks to our Wakan Berry in the terrain We do eat up this bolt strike and I get off a big skull now keep in mind I would like to mention this is not in range of knockoff if it is Colbert if it is not Colbert I kill it from here. However Once I get up to plus one this thing is dead So it's really just about finding a position to get a knockoff kill with Kartana from this range And we kind of win the game with big cart here. So another bull strike pops. I'm just gonna sack off my guy No reason not to Get out into my Zygarde and uh, my opponent's in a tough spot right here, right? They can't really stay in and take this E speed because E speed will also put them in range of knockoff Even if they're Culber, I'm a Kartana, right? So they can't stay in and take this E speed. Keldeo dies. Steelix can come in, but even then I, I can sack something, get out into card, and again, just, just knock off at that point, right? Because his banded E speed is still going to slowly put that thing in range. And Steelix does come out. It is going to extreme speed, do 12% here. And I make a bit of an aggressive play right here. And I think this was a pretty bad play. Um, I should always sack Coco here, uh, in my opinion. I, I don't think there's ever a reason not to sack Coco. Um, and the reason that if I go Kartana here and their Sheer Force Fire Fang, this puts me in a really bad position if they get this KO here. Thankfully, they do not. It doesn't look like that was a roll based on their investment uh, or based on what that roll did. 73 leaving me at 9. So unless they got absolutely min rolled, I think I was okay there, but I'm also risking crit. I'm also risking it being potentially, you know, a roll to kill me. I didn't even calc that, to be completely honest with you. But thankfully... We are able to live. Um, very, very risky play on my end, obviously, but it ends up working out. Tapu Koko is going to come out next. I do click Leaf Blade, knocking this thing out, getting up to plus one attack. I didn't necessarily always kill Steelix with no item from 22, so I felt the need to Leaf Blade. I understand why they didn't go Victini, though. Also, Leaf Blade would have, you know, damn near put that thing in range, so don't think else to keep in mind. Victini is going to come out. Now I use this opportunity to sack my Coco. Glaciate is going to pop, making me slower than this guy, which is unfortunate. Um, but we also see that it's Bolt Strike, so there's a very real possibility this isn't Blue Flare and this is V Create. If this is V Create, which I do expect to be based on the Bolt Strike damage doing a ton of my Jellison, um, this thing is going to put itself in range. Obviously, um, with you know the defense drops but especially with um the helmet hit that this coco will allow so i am going to go ahead take this v create does 64 we see the defense drops and this rocky helmet this is going to allow me to get into my cartana and click knock off from this point keldeo is to it ko does 27 obviously so the next one it will do one percent guys uh we're going to knock this thing off we don't have to worry about vacuum wave by the way guys this is generation um eight Keldeo didn't have vacuum wave. We're gonna knock off again. This does show to be Colber. We're able to knock that guy out and obviously Steelix at 22 dies and even if it didn't we still have our Zygarde able to knock it out. So we're able to win this one um, by the hairs on our chin with a 9% cart and a 2% Zygarde. I think there's plays that I was definitely a little bit over aggressive and I didn't get super punished for in this game but a win is a win. Um, we will take it and we move on to game two where Blind Messiah ended up picking Generation 9 Draft League. So no Usum game just yet. Um, I don't feel as comfortable with my Generation 9 team and in the metagame, but uh, we do have some cool mons and a pretty cool team. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Alrighty, like I said, Game 2 is going to be uh, Scarlet and Violet, the current generation. So something that uh, you newer players or you, people who are maybe weren't around knew some in Sword and Shield might be a little bit more accustomed to and ready to watch. Um, we are obviously have our Terra Latios team in this tier. We're playing against Terra Latios again. And if you guys remember from the previous videos, not a Pokemon I'm too fond of. Terra Steel is really, really difficult for my team to deal with. Um, but I think I prepped around it pretty well in this matchup and uh, did a pretty good job in, uh, in using it. We also have big threats like Iron Valiant, Terra Heatran um, and Rillaboom, but then the rest of the team is a bit passive and defensive. Things like Mandibuzz, Gastron, Swallow, I'm not big on. Um, Swallow, it's like nice for like its budget point value. And then I think Knackle Stack is really, really bad. It's obviously not coming against me because I don't have a ghost. And like, that's the only reason you bring it is like if you have like a niche ghost matchup where you like need to check them on or something like that. But regardless, um, first up we have our Latios. Once again, our main win condition. I always thought I was going to use this thing more offensively, like Terra Dragon, Dracos and all this. Um, but defensively, it's still so good, right? We're a very, very bulky variant. Um, pretty much just max HP, leftover and special attack, speed for base 100. So what are we base? What are we speed for? Oh no, we're, we're speed creeping, Latias creeping our base 100 in Tentacruel. Um, but pretty simple set. We're Psy Shock, Orsphere, Calm and Recover. Terra Poison allows us to not get toxic by the likes of Mandibuzz um, and also not have 
really any glaring weaknesses on the team outside of Psychic from things like Latias and Iron Valiant, but I'm hoping the Latias is either chipped out um, and dead by the time this comes in, <coughs> or the Valiant is, um, or we're not in range of the Valiant at that point because we're pretty darn bulky, or the Valiant is obviously dead as well. <coughs> Jeez, excuse me, sorry. Uh, the combination of Psyshock or Sphere hits absolutely everything. If the Latias is Terra Steel, like I am expecting, um, I really am expecting it to be Terra Steel. Mandibuzz, obviously, we don't hit super hard initially, but we are able to pretty easily set up in that thing's face. It really doesn't do anything to us once we tear up poison. Rocky Helmet is also going to allow us to check the likes of Mandibuzz. It's, if it hits us, it's going to get chipped um, if it knocks us off. And same thing with Rillaboom, as this is one of my main Rillaboom answers um, to not stretch other Pokemon on a team like Klefki too thin. We also have our Miascarada, where protective pad set this week when you play in a Pokemon like Rocky Helmet, Mandibuzz, potentially, um, Heatran, things of the sort. I don't want to get Flame Bite and I don't want to get Helmeted down. So we have a pad set here where Flower Chick, Low Kick, Knock Off, and Triple Axle. This Pokemon's very, very strong here. Really outside of Swalot coming, and Swalot doesn't appreciate taking a Knock Off, you know. Um, there's not much that deals with this Pokemon consistently and long term. So if we find opportunities to get this guy in, we do a ton of damage. It also really helps with our issue of Gastron, as Gastron can be pretty annoying. Then we have our Mamoswine, where Life Orb, Thick Fat, just rocks three attacks. Nice and simple. Crash, High Horsepower, because there's Grassy Terrain, Ice Shard, and Stealth Rock. If the Latias isn't Terra Steel, this kills something every time it comes in, pretty much. And uh, Pokemon like Mandibuzz, Gastron, and Swalot, and Knacklestack, and Heatran all kind of allow for that to happen. Then we have our Klefki, where Rocky Helmet, very, very bulky, Dazzling Limb Spikes, Thunder Wave, and Fairy Lock. For those of you who don't know what Fairy Lock is, it's one of my favorite moves on this Pokemon. Um, and I think it's very slept on. Very often, I feel like Klefki doesn't need that fourth move, right? I have Gleam to hit the mods I want to hit, um, like uh, Mandibuzz and Valiant, non Latias, Gastron, whatever. Spikes to get at Spikes, T Wave to really pressure Pokemon like Valiant, Latias, and things of the sort and slow them down. And then outside of that, there wasn't really anything I felt like I super needed. I didn't feel like I super needed foul play or anything of the sort. So Fairy Lock, what it does is the move, bang, prevents all Pokemon from switching the next turn. So what I can do is say Heatran comes out, I get up a spike, I don't need Klefki anymore. I Fairy Lock the Heatran, I die, I go into Mamoswine and I kill it with a high horsepower. Or I go into Latios and I set up a Calm Mind in its face. I go into Hands and I kill it. I go into Meowstrata and I low kick and kill it or knock off and kill it because it's better neutrally. So I like the offensive play that this allows for me to do. Things like Swalot, same thing. Like if that's me, I'll scratch check, but it feels comfortable coming in on my Klefki, I can always Fairy Lock, die, and then kill it the next turn. I'll probably get up all three spikes in his face first, and then I'll Fairy Lock and die. So I think it's a pretty cool tech. I used it a couple times in a prior, prior Smogon tournament like a year ago, um, and I figured it fit well here. So so that's my goat Klefki. Then we have a Pyopa Berry Tenor Cool. We're just four attacks here. Sludge Bomb, Flip Turn, Giga Drain, and Surf. This is going to be kind of one of my main answers to Valiant. I can't really switch hard in <laughs> because it doesn't take much for me to get put into range, but I am expecting a potentially like a Zen Headbutt variant um, in order to, you know, take me down and, you know, KO me. And uh, with that, we can, with our Pyop Berry, we can eat that up and then Sludge Bomb and pick it off. It's also decently offensively in this game. My opponent doesn't super appreciate switching into Tentacruel. Flip Turn allows me slow momentum out on a lot of these Pokemon into my breakers, Pokemon like Latias, Pokemon like Meowth Grata, and Pokemon like Mamoswine. And last we have our lead in this game, which is going to be our Pyopa Berry lead, Swords Dancing Iron Hands. This is also one of our Terra Captains. I don't imagine I'm going to want to Terra it. We mostly have Poison there for show. Your Drain Punch, Swords Dance, Thunder Punch, and Heavy Slam with another Pyopa Berry. The idea with this guy is the idea of me being Terra Poison potentially in the face of Pokemon like Iron Valiant, which we can live a hit from anyways from full, right? Or especially the Latias, if it is like a Terra Fairy variant, is they're probably just going to go, okay, it's Terra Poison. Psychic move. It's just super effectively regardless. I'm going to Psychic move if I'm attacking this guy. I'll eat that up. In conjunction with Swords Dance, I break through a lot of the fat Pokemon like Mandibuzz, Gastron, Swalot, um, Heatran, uh, and Pokemon like Knacklestack. Obviously, Pokemon like Rillaboom don't really damage us all too well. And those top two offense Pokemon, they don't really threaten us with an Oko or two Akio. If it's not an offensive lot, it does not two Akio me after my high Apple Berry. So I like that aspect. I think the coverage of our stabs plus Heavy Slam covers the most neutrally humanly possible. Heavy Slam helps me cover like Fairy Latiases, um, while Drain Punch covers Steel Latiases. Um, and then just, yeah, neutrally, I just feel like Thunder Punch, Heavy Slam, Drain Punch is kind of the best combination into uh, my opponent's team here. But 
Let's go ahead and jump into it. You can see the team my opponent brought, they end up leaving Nacklestack and Swallot on the bench. I'm not too surprised about that. I didn't think uh, that either were particularly great. Swallot, I could potentially see as a potential response to uh, like Miascarada. But other than that, it was really bad into everything else, in my opinion. Maybe Klefki too, if it's like sitting up iron defenses on it, or um, whatever, acid armor, not iron defense. But yeah, that being said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. You can't see the Terra types on the side, but it is going to be Terra Fire Heatran and Terra Steel Latias. So like I expected, Terra Steel, it's kind of just the best set against my team. And this also shows like, again, from the free Terra, Terra preview kind of side of things. Yes, could they be 18 different types? Yeah, but Steel and Fairy were by far the best two into me, and I was able to kind of identify that in prep, and I was rewarded for it. So that's obviously really nice, and it lets me be a little bit more flexible with my own Terra types, and my opponent has to kind of make those same calls. So I am going to lead off my Iron Hands. We do see a lead Mandibuzz. This is beautiful. I'm just going to get a Sword Stance off. There's nothing this Mandibuzz can do to threaten me immediately. It can toxic me, I guess, but then I'm a plus two for free. Do get off a Sword Stance as Latias is going to come out this next turn. And again, this is Terra Steel, so I get a little over aggressive this first turn. I'm like, okay, I'm going to Drain Punch. I think they're going to Terra Steel, and, uh, you know, in order to live that Ice Punch potentially that's coming out, and uh, I'm going to Drain Punch, get all of my health back and put myself in an incredible spot. Unfortunately, I get that player wrong. Mist Ball does come out. It doesn't do all too much. Only 26. Shout out to God Iron Hands. I do Drain Punch back a decent amount of recovery. Get back 33%. And this next turn, I am going to elect to just Heavy Slam. Um, in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're, they're not going to tear. They maybe don't think I have the Ice Punch. I don't know what it might be. Regardless, I'm fine with taking this damage on my Iron Hands just to get off a crazy amount of damage. We unfortunately don't get the roll. Doing 71, leaving this thing at like 2%, uh, but not the end of the world. We do go down, but this Latias is essentially neutralized. I mean, this thing is incredibly, incredibly low. What I can do is I can go into something fast like my Meow Scrabata and threaten this thing with a KO or a big knockoff into something else on the opposing team. Mandibuzz is going to come out. It does show to be Rocky Helmet and Weak Armor. So I understand Rocky Helmet. I am very interested to see Weak Armor though, because I'm pretty sure if I axled there, this guy was just fucking dead. Uh, like super dead. I knocked off because it covered both the Mandibuzz coming in, knocking off either Boots or Helmet. And it also covered the heat trend coming in. If it was also like a helmet variant trying to get like a flame body burn or something. I'm going to make the boot out of my Klefki. U-turn from the opponent allows them to maintain initiative, but it does give me some more Rocky Helmet chips. So this thing is at 70% with no boots. Keep that in mind as we play throughout this game. Next up, Heat Train comes out. I get pivoted onto my Tentacle pretty uh, comfortably, pretty freely. They miss the Magma Storm, as Magma Storm does. And then they're going to hit the next one, showing to be very offensive by doing 22. And also showing to, I believe, be Choice Scarf. They could also be like Max Timid. I don't think I was screaming like Timid Heat Train on this thing, but I'm pretty sure I was pretty darn close. I get out into my Mammoth Storm right here. They have to th uh, worry about Scarf. They have to worry about me being uh, potentially, uh, obviously, like Thick Fat. I use this as an opportunity to get up my rocks as the Gastron is going to pivot in. And from here, again, this Mandibuzz, 70%, no boots, Miascarada is in. Sarf comes out, doesn't do the most damage in the world as Mandibuzz is going to pivot out here. Take 24, I just flower trick because I'm not super worried about this thing. It can always roost up this next turn, but I have a ton of immediate responses and it coming in basically just gives me a free clef key every single time. So... It is going to roost up this next turn as they do spike. They actually elect to defog, which I figured was a little bit risky, but not the end of the world. I'm just going to spike again as it does end up you turning out. Once again, taking helmet. Now it's at 66%, so that's obviously nice. And now Heatran has to come in and take a spike, which is nice. It's getting nice and whittled down. Fire Blast is going to pop, doing 27%. I am going to flip turn out this upcoming turn. Whittling down this heat trend even more. Didn't think they'd want to stay in, but hey, not the end of the world. Get out of my Mandibuzz, or my uh, Mammo Swine, and I'm just going to click high horsepower, doing 75% to this Gastron. Keep in mind, this Gastron also does not show boots and does not show leftovers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, one, I sure doesn't miss, so it's comfortable to click it. But two, I want to cover for Cust Tap. It does end up being Cust Tap, so thankfully, I sure is going to come up clutch here. We do not got the Gastron, don't have to trade it for our Mammo Swine, which is awesome. Billaboom is going to be the pivot out here. They are in a position where they need to grassy glide here. There's no position where they cannot. They're also going to show to be um, a grassy seed variant. Um, so I'm going to make the aggressive pivot out into my Latios. Obviously, I know they can knock me off. But I shouldn't die, and I should be able to tear the next turn and then recover it off. Uh, but I really do expect a grassy glide to come out this upcoming turn. Grassy glide does come out. Only does 17%. They take a little bit of helmet, which is nice. This next turn, I'm just going to Terra and 
calm mind up in this thing's face. There's not much it can do to really stop me. They're gonna knock off my helmet this next turn, but I mean, are, are we seeing the damage this is doing? Keep my also levitate. We don't have to worry about any helmets or anything of the sort. Latias is gonna pivot out, and I feel very comfortable in just staying in. Psy shocking. We are faster than it, as I didn't expect it to be max speed. It is not expected to be very, very bulky. At most, outspeeding Tentacruel, and that's what we creeped. And end up working out pretty darn well. Heatran comes out, confirming to be Choice Scarf. It does get the burn on a Fire Blast, but it doesn't do all too much damage. We're going to knock it out with an Aura Sphere. Again, putting ourselves in a pretty darn incredible spot. Mandibus is going to come out next, and this tells me that this, uh, this Valiant just doesn't have the moves to hit us, or it didn't kill with Zen Headbutt slash uh, Psy Shock from there. So Foul Play does come out. I recover up in this thing's face. And as you see, uh, Mandibuzz being passive and bad, unfortunately, as we are just gonna go ahead and continue to set up in this thing's face. I don't wanna set to plus a million, but what I wanna do is ensure a two hit KO on this thing if it does elect to roost up. I believe that is plus three for me, yeah. And we want to ensure that we're at plus three, but also as healthy as humanly possible. We don't really need to be healthy for Rillaboom, but we do need to be healthy for Valiant if it is for some reason still carrying coverage. This next turn, I am going to go ahead and just recover up. We take a little bit more damage from this foul play. It doesn't uh, crit us, so at this point, I feel pretty comfortable. Just going for an Aura Sphere. We do 57%. Foul play is going to continue to pop, and again, we can kind of just roost off this damage and uh, put my opponent in a tough spot. Is they're going to foul play again? We recover one more time. And at this point, we're about as healthy as we possibly can be as they foul play this upcoming turn. And we're just going to go ahead, click that Aura Sphere one more time, knock this thing out. And I mean, even if this Valiant can live from here, we still have our Clef Key that can Thunder Wave it. It shows to be booster speed as well right here. We have our Meowth that can deal with it. We have priority in Mammo Swine, um, and we have plenty for this Rillaboom as well. So we are going to go ahead, side shock this guy kill it out comes rillaboom again grassy glide just is not going to kill us even a crit would not kill us from that range and we're going to knock it out with yet another side shock moving on to top 16 um i don't know who i play yet or i at least i forget um if they did have if they already have announced it but we move on to top 16 again in a big money tournament and a multi-generational tournament i feel like i've been playing really well up to this point i believe i, I was looking at the stats i'm i'm nine and one here i think i have the link stat yeah i haven't pulled up um, you're not gonna be able to see as well. Hold on, actually, I can go, I can go like this though. Hold on. Oh, I can't because it's, it's, it's locked. Okay, regardless, we're nine and one plus twenty six right now in this tournament. Um, including one forfeit win. So I'm feeling pretty confident about how I'm playing in this tournament and how I'm playing in general right now, especially going into the BBL where I really want to perform well and play well. And I was slumping a little bit before. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can keep the ball rolling. I would love to go as far as humanly possible in this tournament where there's some great players around me. So Jesus to buy Messiah. Um, and yeah, we'll be back next week with top sixteen on uh, Thursday next week. I'll see you guys then. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Sub if you're new. Later.